chapter 98 from the book of Psalms reminds us, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Chess UMC, good morning. Good morning. Very Merry Christmas Eve to all of you. It's a pleasure to have you here and a welcome into the house of the Lord as we worship at this 11 o'clock service. As always, uh, members or guests, we are blessed by your presence and we invite you to fill out the attendance pad which is located on the aisle side of your pews. So as we go through the service, please fill those out as you can. If you'll turn with me to the uh, manila insert, I just want to highlight a few things that are happening today. The remainder of our services for this Christmas Eve Sunday, we will have the children's production at 3 o'clock here in the sanctuary, and we will have the candlelight Christmas Eve service at 7. I would like to make note that we are in need of one more adult for the uh, nursery at 7 o'clock. Uh, if you are willing to, to help there, we would greatly appreciate your help. So if you're interested in that, I ask you to reach out to me at the end of the service, and we would really appreciate your help tonight. Also note that some of the small group studies that are starting early in 2018, we have several different facilitators on different days and different times and different locations. Uh, we would love for you to be a part of it, and we hope you will be able to find a small group that fits your schedule. Uh, last but not least, if you open up that vanilla insert, you will note that we have the uh, purple insert for poinsettia dedications. And also note that next Sunday, uh, New Year's Eve, we will have our normal uh, Sunday schedule. We'll have an 8.30 and a 9.45 service. At uh, the 11 o'clock service, we'll have a Wesley Covenant renewal service. Information about that is on that green insert. And also for watch night at 10.30 here in the sanctuary on New Year's Eve, we'll have a praise party. So make note of that. Now if you'll stand and greet each other in Chester fashion.
And all God's people said, Amen. Please stand for the call to worship. Christ is coming. The angel announces good news. Christ is coming. With Mary, the and wonder. Let us prepare our hearts to receive Jesus, for the time is at hand. Let us worship and rejoice as we turn now in our hymnal for our opening hymn this morning, number 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Let us pray. Father, as we come into your house, we come in expectation. We are prepared for new birth, renewal, and life. As we gather in your sanctuary and we offer up the gifts, may we also offer our hearts to the service of you in the season and for every day that Christmas may live in our hearts beyond tomorrow, through every moment of our lives. Lord, as we offer these gifts in our hearts, we say together the prayer that your Son taught us, saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. He does not have temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll now turn in your hymnal to number 238, Angels We Have Heard On High. Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. 
And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The title of our message this morning is A Future That Only God Can Write. Oh, holy day, the sun is barely shining. It is the eve of our dear Savior's birth. It is the last day to shop for Christmas gifts. It is the last day to bake Christmas fudge. Whatever. <laughs> and now that I know I've got your attention, and thank you for laughing, okay? I'm going to ask you the question that I asked you four weeks ago. Are you ready for Christmas? Are you ready for Christmas? Have you prepared room in your heart for Jesus? Are you ready for the inbreaking of the creator of the universe to come into your mind, your heart, and your soul in ways beyond anything that you've ever imagined? Are you ready to be open for God to write the history of your life, to partner with the birth of the child, to be all that God has created you to be? Are you willing, are you open, are you ready for Christmas? Ready for the holy, awesome inbreaking of God's miraculous power? Have you prepared room for Jesus? In Luke's telling of the Christian Christmas story of great joy for all people, he places the birth of Jesus in the context of a series of interventions, God intervening into the history of humankind. God often breaks into people's lives in surprising ways, ordinary people doing their ordinary everyday things. And often that's when God appears. Luke tells us that God sent an angel named Gabriel at a particular time to a particular place with a particular message for a particular woman. Theologians speak of this as the scandal of particularity as they ponder how the all-powerful, all-knowing creator of the universe enters into the particularities of history, into the particularities of life. Why would God send an angel named Gabriel to tell Mary that she was going to have a baby? Why would he send an angel to say, you're going to name the baby Jesus, and he's going to reign over the house of Jacob, and his kingdom will never end? Was her obedience necessary? Was it an important part of the history? Was her favor response important for her? 
And was there a faithful response for us? A faith witness of a young girl. Mary is described as a young virgin who is favored, perplexed, thoughtful, and afraid. She questions, she believes, and ultimately she submits to God, her God-given vocation. Mary is obedient to God's will for her life, her, his plan for her life, even when she doesn't have a clue what it means for her future. Mary was ready for the inbreaking of God's intrusion into her life and in history. Like Abraham, Mary trusts trust completely in God's word. Like Abraham, without knowing the consequences, without knowing the future of her decision. Like Abraham, her faith is great, resulting in the birth of a new covenant and a new people. Her unqualified yes, given without prior analysis, with it and any best and worst case scenario, without any calculation whatsoever, seems to be given from a place of total profound integrity. She relates to God as a whole person, a mature person of deep trusting faith, which is so noteworthy as she is so young. I think sometimes we call that an old soul. Cynthia Rigby, professor of theology at Austin Presbyterian Seminary in Texas, comments that Mary's obedience is neither optional nor forced. Not optional and not forced. Think about the holy paradox of these words. Maybe she didn't have an option, but she wasn't forced. But she acts freely when she offers herself as a servant to the Lord. Embracing her God-given identity as the mother of the child of God. This is the only choice whereby she is open to being her true, authentic self. This is the only choice that she could make to be all that God had created her to be. Mary's assignment from God is an honor yoked with struggle. As she is an unmarried woman, she's expecting a baby. It's a scandal. It's a disgrace and ultimately dangerous. It could have cost her her life. All of this being said, the judgment of her neighbors, the questions, the, the glances, don't prevent her from saying yes to God's plan for her life. Mary is a willing partner with God in the coming of Jesus, the Christ child. God's surprising intrusion into her life changes her whole life, her whole future. When God intervenes in Mary's life, it may have even changed the very self that she saw herself to be, her very identity. Mary had never envisioned that she could be used by the creator of the universe for such a blessing that would bring so much joy and so much suffering. Throughout her life and throughout our lives, when God shows up in surprising ways, it can alter the way that we see ourselves. It can alter the way that the future plays out. Patrick has been writing papers for provisional membership and writing about his call to the ministry. And he knows what it's like for God to surprise him. So I'm going to invite Patrick to come up here and, and share with you a little bit about God's surprise intrusion on his life. God has and God continues to intrude in my life. Now being the grandson of a United Methodist minister, attendance wasn't optional in church at all. Now growing up, I knew what God had done. I understood all the stories, but I didn't quite understand what it meant to have a personal relationship with God. Now, I remember when I was 10, my grandfather took me aside one day and he said that, Patrick, one day God is going to call you into ministry. But that wasn't in my plans. For all I ever wanted to be was a United States Marine. And life seemed to be headed that way. Everything I did was pointing in that direction. Until the day when I had to swear the oath. When everyone thought I would say yes, 
most of all, including myself, the answer that came out of my mouth was no. Little did I know that a decision that I made nine years ago, God was shaping that no into a yes for his call to ministry. After years of trying to find my way after that initial no, a still small voice called me back to church. It was there within the narthex of my home church on a four o'clock Christmas Eve service that special woman welcomed me in her arms and was a vessel of God that day and she whispered in my ear, it's good to have you home. Listening to those words was a reminder for me who was a lost and broken soul of just what God's love was all about. God was inviting me back home. So the script that I had wrote for my life, that I had written for my life, was now in tatters. But the one that God had created was just beginning. I went back and reread my call story from my first ordination and was reminded of all the ways that God has intervened. And God is still surprising me. A young mother, school teacher, guidance counselor, who never could have imagined being a pastor or being your pastor. 25 years ago when I preached my first Christmas Eve message, I would have never envisioned that I would be in Chester, Virginia, at a large United Methodist church. I love the Dr. Seuss book, Oh, the Places You Will Go. We think about all the places that God takes us. And I would say that my life and my future have been those that only God could have written. The, per the path that I have journeyed so far is so amazingly different than anything I ever imagined. And being able to be a pastor and share with you so many people that inter intertwine with our lives and listen to you share about how God intrudes, how God speaks, how God transforms. One of the people I thought about as I pondered this message is Ruth, a woman in our church family who's older than me, who came to the contemplative prayer class that I had and who would share, you know, it's hard for me to sit in silence. It's hard for me. I, it doesn't really work for me. But she kept trying. She kept giving herself to the process even after our time together ended. And she came to me recently and said, oh my goodness, I've seen visions. God is putting light and I'm seeing light. And, and she started to try to describe what God was doing, how God was intervening in, in new and different ways in her life. Things that she had never imagined. And I'm aware that every person in this room Every one of us is part of God's drama, God's holy story, in little or big ways. You may never see a vision. You may never be called to be a pastor. You're called and equipped and gifted to do something that is uniquely you. In our confirmation class, watching young lives that are open to the possibility of how God will work. When you think about your life, can you remember or witness times or places or situations when, when God has intervened and challenged your notion of who you are? Maybe this will help you to be more aware of it. In these holy days, is an interesting time for us to ponder who we are and whose we are and where we've been and where we're going. In light of a miraculous story, this Christmas story, which is our story, the gift of a Savior coming to the world for you and for me to forgive us from our sins, to give us a new beginning. All of our ponderings by the backdrop of God's holy drama bringing birth to Jesus, his son. Can you imagine what it would have been like to be an innocent teenager in the first century and to find out that you were going to have a baby? Can you imagine a, a, an angel coming and telling you that? 
and that the child that you were bearing would be a king whose kingdom would never end. What must have gone on in her mind during the conversation with Gabriel, a young, simple woman engaged, betrothed to an older, simple man who was a carpenter, the one who was chosen by God to give birth to the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How did she move from being perplexed and maybe fearful to a place of steady affirmation to what and whatever God's future would bring for her? A future that only God could have written. Maybe it gave her courage to go to Elizabeth, who was already six months pregnant in her old age, ready to give birth. Just as God had sent Gabriel to communicate the message to Mary, God sent Mary to visit with Elizabeth, which was a blessed gift from God for both of them. An, an initial holy interchange with two women to affirm that with God anything can happen. A young virgin and an older woman beyond childbearing age together and the spirit at work between them, giving them courage to step into the future, a future that only God could write where they would give birth to sons who would change the world forever. Both revealing the promise of the Holy Spirit, for nothing will be impossible with God. For nothing will be impossible for God. Will you say that with me? For nothing will be impossible for God. Tell the person to your right, for nothing will be impossible for God. Tell the person on the other side, for nothing will be impossible for God. This is the Christmas Eve promise for us and for every generation that has happened and every generation that has come. Mary experienced the Holy Spirit moving her in her speaking with Elizabeth, bringing courage and strength to trust God. How do you need courage and strength to trust God? Stepping into the future that only God could write. Claiming, how does it feel to say nothing will be impossible for God? And how might you ponder that beyond here? There would be many times in Mary's future where she would feed on these words. As she experienced her son growing and the joy and the pain that she felt in living into God's future for her and him. A message that is personal for her, a message that comes personally to each of us, but is never private. For what comes to us is meant to be shared, to change the future of the world. On this Christmas Eve, we cannot possibly know the ways that God will break into human history as we step forward. But let us consider Mary. And let us consider how God's call challenges you and me the selves we imagine ourselves to be, transforming us from persons of limited possibilities who are unable to bear God to the world, to followers who choose to live into nothing shall be impossible for God. Mary could not have possibly comprehended what God had in store for her. We can't possibly comprehend what God may have in store for us. But on this holy day, we come in awe and adoration of a God of all creation who has the power to change us, to change the world, our minds, our hearts, and our souls. So let us travel with Mary and Jesus. May we be open to the holy drama of these days.
did you know that your baby boy someday walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? Did you know? Kissed your little baby, then you've kissed the face of God. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Possibly know what the future holds for us either. 
and help us to have the faith of Abraham and the faith of Mary to trust you. Give us the eyes of a child to see with delight and hearts to grow in love and grace. Lord, let your Christ child be born in us this day. Transform us by your power that is miracle working power. That we might be able to sing fully from the pits of our souls, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let us receive our King. Spirit of the living God, come now and fall afresh upon this place. Have your way with us, Lord, we pray. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 251. Please stand as we sing together, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
blocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. Your finest, as the angels said, your finest. Thank you. 